Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now today I'm going to make a traditional Caribbean dish. Now in the UK it's coming up to, up to Easter time and in the Caribbean community in particular, around by Easter there's one dish that is gets sold out across West Indian bakeries, across Manchester and at least and London and Birmingham and all the major, major cities and that's uh, Caribbean or West Indian bun, sometimes referred to as Jamaican bun, although Jamaica ain't the only island that makes it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make a Caribbean slash Jamaican bun. Now, there are, uh, as a food tech teacher, I discovered that there are lots of different ways of making lots of different things, and different cultures, different countries, or different people have slightly different nuances on how to make how to make certain dishes. So there is more than one way to make Caribbean bun. Now, this is just one method I'm going to show you. At a later stage, uh, I think I'm going to post another one showing you a different method. And these are the two basic differences between the two ways to make Caribbean or Jamaican bun. One method makes it as a form of a bread, so you actually have a dough which you knead and you need to prove, and then you let it rise and then you bake it, so it's like a form of a bread based bun. And the other method is you create almost like a cake type batter, so it's quite a liquidy substance, and when it bakes, it bakes a little bit like a cake. Um, now people who buy bun, they may not realise that's how it's made, but there are two different ways. So one's a bit more like a cake, in terms of how it's made because you have a batter which you pour in and the other one is a bread based type of method and that's the kind of method that I'm going to be using today a bread based method uh, a dough based method for making our Caribbean bun so let's get to it so just before we get started I want to explain exactly what uh, Jamaican or Jamaican bun or West Indian bun actually is and how that differentiates from any other kind of bun which you may buy in the UK where I'm based. Um, now a Jamaican bun is not dissimilar to another to the other types of English type type bun like a regular fruit bun but the main thing is it's consistency first of all a Jamaican bun or West Indian bun is a lot denser a little bit it's a heavier than a regular sort of tea cake type bun and also it's heavily spiced as well one spice in particular, which is a must, is allspice. Now, if you don't have allspice, which is made from grinding pimento, which I'll show you in this video, you can also use cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. Now, if you have allspice, allspice originally got its name because when they first discovered it, they thought it, 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 it they felt it had the taste of cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg all rolled into one, so they called it allspice. So if you have those separate individual um, uh, spices, you could just use those individually as well. So you have the, the, the flavour and the smell of allspice of menthol going right the way through it. It's got a lot of fruit in it, so it's got a lot of dried fruit, um, some fruit peel, some orange zest, zest peel, and whatever other kind of dried fruit you want as well. You can really be a little bit creative with that. It's usually made, um, in, well I make it with, with brown sugar, and sometimes people use browning additionally to make it brown. So it should be quite a dark brown type, type of bun, whereas regular bun, say especially in the UK, when you cut it, it's quite pale and white like like regular like regular bread so without further ado let's make some bun okay so for our caribbean slash jamaican bun or jamaican slash caribbean bun these are the ingredients let me talk you through we have our pimento or our allspice we have our soft dark brown sugar i have some dried apricots and some mixed dried fruit raisins and the peel and stuff you could have whatever version of mixed dried fruit you really like but raisins does need a factor. I've got 200 grams of strong white flour. I've got a spoonful of bran and wheat germ to compensate for the lack of bran in the flour. I've got some dried yeast. I've got a spoonful of marmalade. I've got 100 grams of glacé cherries. I've got a teaspoonful, half a teaspoonful of rock salt and um, 50 grams of, of margarine. Now, all the ingredients I'm using for this particular dish are vegan and also you can't forget a healthy spoonful of blackstrap molasses. All right, these are our array of ingredients. Let's bring them all together. Now, although we could make this entire thing by hand, I mean, if we have a food processor, uh, then let's let's use the gadgets just to save ourselves some time. But everything I'm doing now in a food processor for the sake of time, you could just do by hand, by stirring and kneading yourself. Now, in this particular food processor, I have a plastic blade, which is what's generally used for kneading. Um, other food processors have a hook, which is even better, but use what you got. And if you don't have a food processor, like I said, you can use your hand. To begin with, I'm going to mix all the dry ingredients together. And there's two parts to making this bun. First of all, I'm going to make a dough. And then once I've got a the dough, then I'm going to add in the fruit. 
Uh, I think that kind of works better to get a better distribution of the, of the fruit. So I'm gonna make the dough first, and then I'm gonna let it prove a little bit, and then I'm going to add, and then I'm gonna add the fruit to it. So let's go. First up, 200 grams of strong white flour. Now you can use wholemeal flour as well. Um, because this is quite, uh, makes quite a dense one as it is, I've always had lightening up by using a white flour. But then to compensate for the, for the lack of fiber, I've got a, a, a spoonful of, of, of bran and a spoonful of wheat germ to put back in, and that's what was missing. Now the interesting thing is, if you do it this way, you still manage to get the lightness of the white flour, but you actually get the, the bran and the germ back from what was originally taken out. So you get the best of both worlds in a sense. Next up, I've got a teaspoonful of rock salt. In you go. Next up, I've got 50 grams of soft brown sugar. That goes in as well. Next, I've got a spoonful of pimento or allspice. It's a, it's a really generous helping that because you really want the flavor to go all the way through. <clears throat> Next up, we're gonna add our fat. We're gonna add 50 grams of margarine. This is a, a vegetable margarine. Comes a margarine. I'm going to add seven grams of fast-acting dried yeast, and then I'm going to add in a teaspoonful of molasses. Now this is going to give it a rich flavour, but also help give it its traditional dark brown colour. Now, if you didn't have molasses, um, there are other substitutes you can use. Uh, in addition, some recipes say in order to get the dark brown colour, to use uh, gravy browning. Um, but I couldn't actually find any of that, so um, I think uh, this is a good alternative. And then I'm going to add in some Cinnamon. Now I know all spices kind of all the flavors of everything all together, but I don't know. I quite like making sure I get some actual cinnamon flavorings. So about a teaspoonful of cinnamon. What I'm going to do is give these relatively dry ingredients a bit of a blend. Then, as they're blending, I'm going to pour in a maximum of 150 mils of warm water. Okay, now, as you saw, I didn't quite add all the 150 mils of water because, because of the fat and also the sugar, it's kind of blended down and we've got our dough consistency without adding that much water. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna knead it now for about five minutes and I'm gonna leave it to prove. So here we have quite a soft dough mixture. And we do want it quite soft because we ultimately want quite a soft bun. If you have a hard, stiff mixture, then you're not going to have a soft bun or bread for that matter. So soft dough, yes, yeah, a good way to start off to get a soft bun or a soft bread. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just knead a little bit. It's soft and pliable, exactly what we're looking for from our, from our bun. Soft and pliable. But this should make a nice, soft, pliable bread. So, I think we're about good here. So this is our ball of, of dough, and I'm gonna leave this to prove for about an hour. So I've greased the container, dough in, I'm gonna cover and leave to prove. This will take about an hour or more, depending on how warm your room is. And hopefully this little blob of dough should double in size. And we're back. So after what seems like, well, not seems like, after what was literally hours, I was waiting for the dough to prove and double in size, uh, it eventually has. Now, the thing with this is that you have to allow it to double in size, otherwise it'd be absolutely rock 
solid bun. It may still taste nice, but we're rock solid. Now, my kitchen wasn't very warm, and for some reason, even after about an hour initially of leaving it, it hadn't grown in size a touch. So in the end, I had to cheat a little bit, and I put some boiling water uh, in a metal pan in the oven, and I turned the oven to about 27 degrees, which is about the temperature that yeast needs to be at in order for it to, to prove properly. And eventually, uh, I put it in a, I put this inside the oven, and I covered it with a, a damp cloth, and after a few hours, it eventually, it's eventually doubled in size. Now the dried fruit rice, I've got about 70 to 80 grams of dried fruit, which is a mixture of raisins, peels, uh, some apricot, and of course some glazed cherries. So I'm gonna literally put them in and then fold the mixture in. Okay, so I'm just gonna just fold fruit into the bun, making sure the fruit's covered by the dough. So when it bakes, if the fruit is not covered by the dough, it's just stuck on top. When it bakes, the, um, the fruit that's exposed to the heat will just burn. So I'm just making sure all the fruit is nicely encased. Okay, so I've had an idea. I thought this is a wonderful opportunity to do a bit of an experiment. So I'm going to try Jamaican bun two ways. Put this one in there. Put this one in there. Roughly the same size. There we go. These two I'm going to steam. These two I'm going to allow to bake. So I'm just going to leave them for a little bit to settle down. Then we'll steam and bake and then we'll come back and see what the results are like. Okay, so I've got the boiling water on to steam. So here we have two Jamaican bun and they're gonna steam cook. And I've got two Jamaican bun. These ones are gonna go in the oven. So the steam ones will come out first. They're really soft. And for both of them, I'm going to coat them with a mixture of sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon with some hot water melt just to melt it off. I'm going to brush each one of them with that while they're hot so the, so the mixture can soak in. And when the uh, baked ones come out, I'll do the same with them. The baked ones to me look like they need about another 10 minutes. In fact, to be honest with you, the downside with this is that it's quite hard to tell even with the steam ones, if they are actually cooked all the way through. In some cases, you won't actually know until you cut them through, but I'm pressing them and they feel fairly solid. So, let's make an assumption that they're done. Okay, and the other ones have come out now. I'm just gonna give them the, the same sort of coating. This coating is just some brown sugar with some cinnamon. Maybe even both the same coating. So all four now, or the, both sets rather, have had the same coating. The baked ones took about 10 minutes longer to cook. Although I've already said it's quite difficult to check or to know for certain if the steam ones are fully cooked until we cut them open. Okay, here we go. We have our two Jamaican bun, our Jamaican bun done two ways. First of all, they smell delicious. You can smell all the, all the spices straight away. So I'm going to cut a slice of each so we can have a look to see what the difference is between baking the bun and steaming the bun. So this is the baked bun first of all. Let's give us a cut. Wow, that looks really good. That's the perfect consistency we'd expect for a Jamaican bun. It's quite soft, but it's quite finely dense. But that's, that's just about perfect. So that's the Jamaican bun. That's the steam, the baked bun. And this is the steam bun. Wow, surprisingly, even though it's steamed, the inside wise looks pretty much the same baked, steamed. 
because as soon as the hot water, the hot steam hits the outside of the starch, it seals it. And then all you're getting really is the heat working through to, to bake. So if you look on the inside, one steamed, one steam, one baked, but inside they look virtually identical. So when baked with steam. The only difference is this one is actually softer than this one and the outside is a little bit softer as well. So that's the main difference, the coating on the outside, but consistency wise, look, steamed, baked. So in essence, we know now we can fully bake stuff using water. All right, here we go. So this is our steamed bun, that's what it tastes like. Oh, very nice. Soft. See all the spices coming through. Mm, lovely. The taste of spices coming through. It's very soft. The crust is a little bit sticky, which must you. I quite like it that way. Mm. Really nice. And for me, I could do this even a little bit more spice. Maybe a bit more cinnamon, maybe some nutmeg. Maybe a touch more pimento, but really nice flavour. This is the bakes. Not quite as soft, to be honest with you. It tastes virtually the same. Apart from the actual crust on the outside, the steam one is a bit softer, and the baked one is a little bit darker coloured. To be honest with you, but you have to tell the difference. So experiment-wise, Baked, steamed. It's just amazing that you can get such a very similar result with two completely different cooking methods. So for whatever reason, if your oven's broken down, or it's out of order, or you happen to be out on a campsite, you don't have access to an oven, but you have access to a stove, you can make bun using that method. Uh, and if you can make bun using that method, you can also make bread using a similar kind of method. So maybe in a future video, I'll show you how to do some steamed bread and show you how that comes out. Now, the only difference I, I would imagine with a steamed bread is that um, steam doesn't brown starch like uh, like baking does. This particular bun is dark, not because of the cooking method, but because of the ingredients, so it's brown anyway. But if you had a regular bread dough, which was pale, it would remain pale, but as you can see, it would still be completely cooked through on the inside. Steamed, baked, both delicious, which do I prefer? To be honest with you, I think I slightly prefer the steam one. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more moist. It's got a nice, almost softy, slightly sticky uh, on the outside. Um, but again, to be honest with you, it's very, you'll be very hard push to tell, to tell the difference. And that's how to make um, spicy Jamaican Easter bun. Cook two ways. Well, once again, thanks for joining us at Food Tech 101. Food Tech 101 is now available via email at admin at foodtech101.co.uk. You can follow us on Instagram and you can also find us on Facebook. As always, my name is Mr. Lybird, but you can call me Sir. Things we know.